serious spirit as they bid to become the title for the very first time for that particular school. In terms of how they got to the final, well, it has been an interesting journey for both of them. Linton started off with a good victory over the LaSalle Watford, but not a good victory, they threw on that occasion with 14 to 210. Then they followed up with a victory over St. Fennans, 219 to 110, before a quarter final victory, comprehensive and all as it was, 715 to 19 points in the semi final. They just got there, a late, late goal in short, but they got over the line against Delisle College from Waterford on the score line in 11 to 12 points. Christian Brothers, well, they were emphatic victories over Castlewell College at the open round, 619 to 10 points it was in that day. They got a boy in round two, and in the last round, the last game of the Road Robin series, they were too good for the um, top of the CBS in the quarter final. They had been winners in terms of a big scalp, 214 to 212 against the CBS, and then in the semi final. Because Thomas CBS took 12 to 14 points. They won this competition. They have been this is for the very first time, I think it was back in 2016. And that was their they defeated Clanmill High School at that occasion. And that was their first time in three to 97 years. They reached the quarterfinals in 16 and 17. In the semi-final, they in the 18, they reached the semi-final. They were never without score reach at six points. Lost oh, over that occasion. beaten by all skull reach. The referee Johnny Murphy from Limerick is in charge and uh, the uh, the Barrack Street Band who led the teams around on what can only be described as a most most colourful occasion in terms of public here in Neeside as we know pause for our national anthem. Sam from Middleton, Ryan McCarthy from Killer, the half hour line. We've got two Middleton men in the wing, Gary Carroll and Ross O'Regan, where the centre we've got. This school providing us with Cohen Hickey, the inside line, Keen Farmer from Middleton, Joe Stack, the main scoring man is from Kinto Oban, Jason Hancock from the father on East Club. The uh, CDC team, Keen Long is their goalkeeper, the full back line, David Barry is from Sars, Pallor Hennessy from Meadow, and Connor Murphy from the Sars Club also. The half forward line. Then Robert Supply got old boy Cahy. Ian McDaly for me. Liz Meyer, Liz Moore in Watford and Killian O'Donovan from Douglas. Midfield we've got Declan Hannon, one of the three on the team. Seven all together from Bowie on the panel. And Kevin Finn. What a day it could be for Kevin Finn. He could be not marking his club mates Sam, Sean Sam Quirk. The half forward line, Shane Ballard, Noel Hapner and Conrad Paul. Ballard and Paul from uh, Bowie and Hannon from Douglas. The inside line, Owen McCarthy from Innes Jack. Or Kelly from St. Finn Bowser and Jack Highland from the same club. We're almost ready to get this particular Hackney Cup underway. Everything in readiness and what it should be. Marvellous day for Hulling. The first little bit of a battle has broken out, but we followed the action and it's CBC who are on their way with it. And they own McCarthy sent it in around the goal mode area. And, but this time it just stops wide and we've got the first wide of the evening to report to you. We wait for the pop out to uh, restart matters and of course the backroom staff who've done so much work in getting their teams to this particular place. Ian Coley, Troy O'Callaghan and James Mulcahy driving the fox of the new management team in Middleton. And up in the uh, Christians we have Tony Wolf and Glenn Rovers, Ken O'Halloran, a former top footballer and the Bishop Stone Holder. He's also involved in that O'Callaghan going on and Trey McBarton and Mikey Breen from Tipperary who's a PME student in the school. Middleton are on the attack. Can they get the opening score on this particular match? Well, they have possession of them on the inside right now. And the player that has it, Farmer, giving in. And there's a shot going in, but a brother brought down Joe Stack, Winfrey. And 
There's defending of the highest order there where the ball has got all spunk the road with Cahy. Well Cahy gives it out and it comes as far as Sam Quirk and can Sam Quirk find the target he can. And they've got their first wide of the game. So we've got an attack each and a wide each. As uh, the referee just checking to make sure everything is okay and he's calling over the first bit of discussion that we're going to have. I'm not too sure what all this is about and he's just... Uh, the linesman here is indicating as well that there might have been a different zone coming in. Shane Barrett who was involved in that. I mean, say that Dylan Hogan seems to have come over, not Dylan Hogan, but Richie Landers and himself. Some would call it getting to know each other as the uh, slitter goes out the field and running out with you know is Kevin Finn and Finn is moving inside can he get a shot in he can get a shot in but I don't think he was going for a score and it's a uh, good get his come as far as Darren Moore Moore clearing out the field oh wonderfully won back by nine half at the Douglas Pill he's trying to make an angle for himself he's driving forward and he gets an opportunity now along the ball across the field here where Declan Hannon has it oh, but he thought he had it he has a no though has been to go back and defend that line and defend it there well and Dylan Hogan is in there making sure that there's no way past him and out they come Middleton CBS the lovely ball out by Hogan it might drop down as far as Cohen Hickey Hickey from his goal and then he gathers it the snap came in and the referee is pointing that by Shane Barrett and he and then an illegal intervention with the holding there so we wait to see who's going to take this particular score we still wait the opening score two and a half minutes gone at the Hatley Cup final in the 2019 version of it and of course the Road of Honor which is being won by St. Francis again is on 21 titles but interestingly it's took 14 years since they last won in 2005 we wait for this free which has been taken by Ryan McCarthy he's dropping it in uh, around the area and then the Ball in the back of the and the score of the game, and I would imagine that it may have come from Joe Stack. And uh, that one, I think Jason Hatton is the player that actually got the end of it. So the lot of free end, and we've got the opening score, the goal from Jason Hatton. In this particular match, in this week in CBS, who lead on a scoreline and a goal to no score. We've got how many goals in both matches today? Middleton to go on the attack again. And we watch this one. And who's going to get on the end of it? Is it going to be Hacker once again from Father O'Neill's? Good defending there by Panner Hennessy. He gets it open. It's won back in the play that has it. Ross O'Regan, Ross O'Regan, for a difficult angle. And O'Regan sees it in and over and out. They are on one more. It's a really positive side. Positive for stop. That's Ross O'Regan. Sends that one over the bar and then all we got a score by right? one one to do a score and we're three minutes in. Oh, so the long delivery and finish so perfectly to the back of the net. What an incredible stop for Middleton CBS. The puck over is on its way from Glen Long, from Keen Long, I should say, not Glen Long. He's from Glen Rovers and he gets it down as far as Owen McCarthy. Owen McCarthy getting it inside. Good play by him as he tries to get across the ball. And when he gets it across the ball, but I don't think that that was the desired intention of to get all over the line for the first sideline puck of the evening. The sub sideline puck and the referee now is calling across. One of the middle of the CBS player, I'm not too sure what he saw there, but he's just telling him that, you know, the camera down a little bit, and obviously tensions are high. Both these teams, they haven't met in this year's competition, they did meet in last year's O'Callaghan Cup, so there's no great history between them, but maybe that's masking the fact that you had Middleton and Blarney playing in uh, the Cork Premier Holding final earlier on in the year, and I'm sure that there are some when unresolved issues maybe from that particular battle there are always unresolved issues there always a change in the CBC team where they've brought in from the very start a comic daily from this mile from this morn parking his brother at St. Raff back and all the deliveries down the field from the aforementioned a comic daily he gets it into the corner We'll see what's going to happen. It's still there a stalemate the situation. Who's going to get the first score in a Hatley Cup final for the Toes for 101 years for CBC? That won't happen for a while, so it changes there. And we notice that Garon McCaggy is playing in the left hand side and just checking as to which of the players it didn't stop the game. And uh, it would appear that it may be Connor Murphy from South Club that doesn't stop. I see the remainder of the backs. And then, of course, I looked down a minute and probably see him. No. Paul McPaul, who's their main free taker, has an opportunity to make history for himself, make history for the men uh, from the young players from the Christian Brothers College in Sydney Place on the north side of Cork City as he gets ready to strike this one off his right and does he put it over the bar and the answer is over the bar. So Paul McPaul opens the account, but 
Christian. That score coming in the fifth minute of the game. Bobby Paul, an important score in terms of three. They've yet to score from today, so it is 1-1 to a point. The puck is on its way. Long delivery too, dropping the opposition 45. And going back there together, it is here with Daly. Daly now, who has a broken the other side of the half-back line, and decides to strike it over his head. It goes down deep into an enemy territory. What a great catch there by Lloyd Hartnett. Lovely ball by Hartnett. Beautiful crossing ball. Lovely holding here being played by Christians, but Brooklyn defending by Middleton CBS as well. As they try and make sure they nobody's going to pass here. The blue and white clad Middleton CBS lads drawn from the fame luxuries down around the East Cock area. Well, I'm through here. And as Kevin Finner has it, he throws it outside. As far as Jack Allen, it's a while since the Castlehaven footballer scored in a happy company played it across the goal here. But it's cleared out rather easily, I would say. Well, it will come out rather easily by Dan Morgan to move back to Jack McCann and a lovely delivery up the field by McCann to Gary Callan from the Middleton Club. Gary from out by the sideline, right in the middle of the path, dropping in around the goal mode area. And we watch who's going to catch this one. There's a, a situation here and it's cleared out again. Serious standard of falling being displayed by both of these teams and a wonderful, beautiful location for it here on the east side. And the ball is uh, the slipper is caught by none other than Ryan McCarthy. Ryan McCarthy tries to uh, Kevin Finn, I should say, moves it in. And Finn moves it in and gives it to the forward and forward and forward. And it's a second one for the TPS. It's a second one for the forward and forward. And it's a sixth spin. So it's now one more to two points in favour of Middleton CBS. Poco lying in and goes. No shot for Poco's here in this particular so far in this particular match. And again it's one back. He wouldn't look like Kevin Finn. He's got the boy to me in this game. Kevin Finn only will be five in this college. Shane Ballard, the team captain, and Shane Ballard. Did a lovely strike by him. He's step out over the line. I thought that was a rough call by the uh, linesman there. He was traveling on the line. And uh, when he was advised to give his credit to Lions Man, he was closer than us, so why not just uh, just get on with it? So this sideline cut to be taken by Ryan McCaffrey from Killer. We had about 29 balls in the first game and they were quite difficult to hit them because of the bare nature of the ground. And we'll see how the Killer player gets on with this one as he gets ready to strike it and uh, as it was in the first game low on the ground rather than a clean catch in it no it's driven inside once again and the player that worked it up there was Owen McCarthy but it's one back and it's Ryan McCarthy that has it from Middleton CBS driven into the corner hoping that Cahal may make a run for Cahal Hickey been knocked over there by Raul Caron Mulcahy and Cahal Hickey strike it rather gingerly in around the goal mode area is there going to be in here to kill it there is a, uh, a flick in it but it, it comes out and only out as far as Ross O'Regan Ross O'Regan and it's killing on none of them from Douglas to get it out. Oh, as far as midfield, got Kevin Finn. He's headed the slip on four occasions thus far in this match, and we're in the early stages of it. Moving back there to get it though, is Sam Quirk. Sam Quirk has it, strikes it over his head, and it goes in as far as the opposition of the half forward line, where it's now taken an opportunity here for a strike to come in from Joe Stack, and Joe Stack strikes it from the way out the field. Unfortunately for Joe, it's the second wide of the game from a midfield CPS perspective. Sure, the referee is checking that every 
everything is ready to this and the pitch here is in well the grass may be a little bit short but there's no doubt about it it's good for holding and later on at a quarter past seven we have the big match between Cork and Clare will it be bigger than this though in terms of uh, underage holding this is the biggest game of the year as Kahaliki has it Kahaliki strikes it over his head hoping maybe that uh, uh, yes it got aside by Jason Hacker and Hacker gives it out and this time it's landed over the bar and Joe Stack was the player that got that one so Stack gets in scoring off the map, he'd be pleased and uh, Joe Stack getting that one and certainly the uh, key to old man would be key will require a lot of watching I would suggest in this game 11 minutes in and it's another point for Middleton CBS we follow the action if they are spotted a foul had been committed the foul was coming out again with Chilean or so to the free more miss on the right half back position an opportunity for a water break and this game has started in some will win fashion and of course the Christian Brothers boys who had a busy week in terms of winning the Munster Senior Cup quarter final during the week they were caught on the sleeve because they are and now here the referee which is going to the office which is now going to the referee and it's Henry Paul about to take this one and this free which is what's going to be the result of the goal down to the Christians and we watch the puck out now. Where that will resume. It's been a good start for the Blarney players. They have contributed all four points to the uh, Christian Brothers tally a four point and back there defending. Lovely skill it must be said. And the player that did show the skill was Irma Daly, the Lismore player. He walks it up the field hoping to get the second foul on that and that's now Hafton. Lovely crossfield ball here from Hafton. Who's going to gather this one I wonder. It runs on a little bit. But it's taken by Owen McCarthy from Inniscarra and Maycock and Owen McCarthy pulls the trigger. Old McCarthy keeps the tradition of Mick Cockman scoring for Christians in the play. He sent up the Calvin the, the other side of the pit, so top team in the sky, and certainly the last two scores coming. They have all scored their opponents, and Christians have on a scoreline of three points to five points to one since the third minute of the game when Russell Reed got the second uh, second score and the first point for the minute of the team. Lovely, this but one point match right now. Everything is okay, so we follow the action and the puck is coming right on top of the half hour, on the half back there, whichever way you want to look at it. And one aggressive play there by Kevin Fulton. Let's just look at Shane Barrett. Shane Barrett has a player in front of him. He gives it to the player on the other. This one is filled over the bar. And CBC are absolutely pouring into the media this game. And Kevin had it and knocked him down the player for the future. As he gets another one, it's his second point in the match, and Declan Hannon will be, Hannon, I should say, will be pleased about that. He's now gone as far as six points. He's got Christians as far as six points, so it's six points to one goal and two. Now, one back once again. You've got Daly, who's stamping the tallest in the center half back position. He's going to take this one, a good one on here. And it's now Hafner trying to get position, but he's been well back and slipping inside. And uh, there's a great race going on here. Come to Jack Allen. Jack Allen's effort is blocked down by Cormac O'Brien. O'Brien is right on the end line and it's no gone beyond the end line, so it's going to be a sideline on a 65, I should say, and that will test the free taking skills of Paul McPaul a little bit further. If he's actually the player that's going to be asked to take this one, we'll check. Paul is the player that's selected to take it 
and uh, he's been all out in front free so far and this one find out and then we we'll check in a minute and tell you that it is a total bar it's now seven points for one goal and two they have pushed him out and out to two after the concession of that early goal and that long delivery in as far as I can see was finished in the back of the net by Jason Hopper and Joe Stack was in there as well cause you a bit of grief we're back now no. it's uh, seven points to one two and uh, they go rising here for it and uh, getting on to it interesting situation where two cup players can play in a happy cup final that's the joy of it schools holding or schools getting football it's like no other now again coming forward to take this one is Bodrick uh, Bodrick uh, Powell who has followed the target on four occasions and certainly his free taking has been key to the success of this team over the uh, this particular journey the Blarney man just bending as I said three of them Blarney players on it uh, on the uh, starting 15 and seven of them all uh, in all on the panel this three well more or less in the middle of the pack five metres in from the sideline it has left his stick I think there may be a bit of a tail on this one and it goes up for a wide ball and that's the third wide of the evening for Christian the visit of the two goalkeepers absolutely by a country mile is Jack McCann as he gets ready to let it out the field and nothing wrong with his deliveries as he moves it forward once again now little CBS now on the end of this one a foul there being committed on top of the from the spoon so oh, there would be an opportunity now for a free taker to come out and take this one and I think coming forward to take it is a good one to Ryan McCarthy yeah, very close to side end well what are we talking about 47 or 48 metres old into the goal at the table end, end of the ground here in Porcupine what a call they are expecting around 5,000 people who check it in as a little bit later just left this take oh it's arrowed over the bar that's a beautiful point from Ryan McCaffrey yes, out by the side there. a lovely point it's three by him and that certainly will bring them back into it that's for coming uh, 70, 18 minutes in Ryan McCaffrey and then we'll see the score and see if it goes back to Ryan so Ryan McCaffrey gets their third point of the match a free situation the referee has blown the whistle once again and uh, now we have another opportunity maybe the CBS could add four points here but it is the last four points prior to that to the CBA the Christian Brothers team and now we're checking this one on this free which has been taken by Ryan McCarthy once again now I presume that they won't expect him to put this one over the balance halfway between his 45 his team's 45 and their 65 as he tries to nail it it has left his stick it's travelling with style with panache is there accuracy in it as well and the answer on this occasion is not it's a wide ball it's their second wide of the evening and called in the play now is the custodian Keen Long let's sit down there Keen Long trying to get on the end of this one and uh, Long goes to and he goes down for his own McCarthy who's has started really brightly in this game now CBC go forward again a lovely pass inside and let's take two soon the pass came and let's know what he the country when a shame battle has it I'll tell you he's thinking about it he gives it out to Jack Callahan and Jack Callahan's effort is taken off the line Callahan who got a big goal in the uh, semi-final they were expecting push on the back there what a good bit of defending out there on that corner Daly uh, was instrumental in it remember he's the player who stopped in the right half back so it's a big day for the Daly family from this war and war from as uh, they show up the half back line provides two thirds of the half back line of the Christian Brothers uh, College team the big day as well for Don O'Malley who has been leading the uh, charge in terms of development of holding in Christians because see later on he's one of the coaches of the Cork Senior Holding team that will be hoping to get the their campaign off to a winning start after two losses against Kilkenny and against Wexford. Now oh, this free, I think it's McCarthy who's taking it by McCarthy once again. The last one, more or less uh, the same, I suppose the angle is a little bit more difficult. Now what a huge amount in that. The ref checking, oh yes, the reason the place held up is because of the goalkeeper who is down injured at the moment in an effort to keep out that ball there from Jack Allen. Jack Allen into this side and certainly he has an eye for goals and of course an outstanding Gaelic footballer as well. But if I think that would be happy enough to let Ryan McCarthy take this one, the killer player. And uh, 
whether the wind is with him or against him from all vantage point here. Now, it is plenty accuracy on this occasion, maybe a little late issue attachment, but coming out with it is a David Bally, and David Bally getting it open, only out, it's not a stack of stack moving forward, and let's run, oh, what an absolute different save, pure stack of it, and the save of St. Green Long, that will go down, and it's out for 65, Joe Stack, what a bit of a slipper he gave it, and if he did, the uh, goalkeeper inside, Keen Long, but up the stick, and you know something, with the force of it, he moved back a little bit, but that certainly was a, it could be a crucial score, it could have been a crucial score, it could be also a crucial moment, no, a 65 did a crew, so whether McCarthy can nail this one or not, he would certainly take the sting out of that particular bit by Joe Stack, what an operator this guy is, and uh, operating inside the full forward. He's taking his head in the right direction, can he get over the ball? I wonder if the answer is yes, that's a good point by him. So Joe Stack can take some credit, and so to Kim Keen Long, because of the green flag would have been waved, waving only for him. So Ryan McCarthy, his second point in succession, the first one from a free, now is 65, and he has bought the side seven, 147 points. Race on here, push at the back, a little bit of an easy one, I would suggest the other. But the push goes on for McCarthy, and this should be a wrong Easy free for a player of the calibre of Paul Brick Paul from the Browning Club. Oh, for Club, for County, and now for his school has an opportunity to put a point between the sides. A little over there. Oh, should I have done it? Over it goes, and it's his. Fifth point so far in this match. Fire bombs and other things going on are all the place. Now, Slitter dropping down on the opposition and the middle. Oh, what a madness catch. It must be set by Gary Cowell. And he's coming forward, but uh, what the fit with? I tell you, this is falling at a very, very high order. Both teams have serious credit for it. We have all the skills being shown here by both sets of players. And we know from the fellas, Roy McCarthy, Roy McCarthy, and knocked down and is taken away from him. And only on to now is Finn. Finn lays it off the side of Shane Barrett. And Shane Barrett strikes it in around the goal mode area. And oh, he's got the hands inside. I tell you, the goalkeeper there had to be put in the challenge. Was he? It was Keen Long. From Jack McCann, I should say. He was way well equal to it. Jack McCann in that occasion. One of the five Kilter Oak players on the uh, team. No, nine seven up or uh, some mentor over there. Certainly not clean by the way things are going. He's giving his instructions. But the, this sideline ball and going across the table. There's Kevin Finn. He's had been absolutely outstanding game for Christians. You know, he might be able to socialise in Middleton tonight or anything like that if they were to go on and win it. But that's for another day and quite an amount of holding to be played thus far between two top teams in Cork. And obviously by extension now in Munster as Middleton tried to add. Uh, he should have used the word try there when Cape defending there. Got a free out there and the player was fouled to it. He can do it man. Oh, lovely ball up into the corner. Who could have got on the end of it there? Jason Hanker, the tall player, getting inside. Was he down there with the whether he was or not? He gives it to Kahaliki. And Kahaliki strikes it over the shoulder. Is it over the battle wonder and Kahaliki? A wonderful point in this group can celebrate that one. All of that and goes. That's a good score by Kahaliki. And it means now we're back in business once again as Kahaliki gets a point for Middleton. And that's what coming 24 minutes into it. And he brings it to a 1-5 to 8 points. Parity once again for the second time in this match. Straight puck out down the centre to centre half back. And that's it. Pope to follow. I've seen better. And it's no one means that Keen Farmer is back in action. And Keen Farmer there. Got a crack there. But I tell you the puck out. Probably left him in a little bit desire. And uh, there's a free in. And Middleton now for the very first time. Can see him. And not for the first time, for the first time for a while. Can see him into the lead in this game. They've already scored one goal in five. To Christian's eight points. We've watched the free taking skills of uh, none other than the man who's already found the target on three occasions, and I would imagine Ryan McCarthy would put this one over the bar. 
the referee telling him to move it back a fraction or two and uh, we're now coming five minutes to the uh, short whistle and Ryan McCarthy getting this one it's about 44 meters out and the standard of holding is so high that you expect these to go over and the expectancy is matched by the reality that it has now gone over and we wait for the cut out to come from Keen Long. He's giving an indication that he goes down the right with it and he has gone right. It's a breaking situation, Middleton and Coley, absolutely no doubt no wonder about that. They're walking in, he's got his Keen Farmer once again, and Keen Farmer from 45 metres out, he decides to sail it towards goal and this occasion it doesn't find it, it's the third wide of the game and again that has been a high, high quality, the scoreboard after 26 points to that one goal and six to Middleton CBS, eight points to Christians in the Dr. Hafty Cup final, the puck on goes again and uh, there's about five players to the side in around uh, a group of space in about two square yards trying to get a position, that's narrowed down a little bit and going forward now with Jack O'Kelly and Jack O'Kelly, the bath there is forward and of course he has another fellow bath there in, uh, alongside him there if he wants to use him and then this occasion he is fouled and that means of course that none other than Paul Paul will be summoned forward, can he add to the five he's already arrowed over the bar, one gets the impression that he will for him for a free to draw the sides level one more time and uh, he hits it and uh, sailing over the bound the answer is yes and for the fourth time in the opening half of this match these two evenly match sides are on parity situation no it's gathered by Middleton. If they walk it in, there is the right area border. What a great put up at the ball there by Dick and Handlin. And Handlin, the uh, bad, the bad, if you what string, what finesse. Not going to free to put up his hand. I'm not too sure what that was about. No, no, probably a bit over the situation. I have to keep an eye on it. Now there's a plucky offence. The end result is there's an opportunity for Ryan McCarthy once again to show his shooting skills and it's out. Yeah. Catching it for the top high and the referee now has, uh, he's in around the goal mode area and I would imagine that Ryan McCarthy will he'll definitely go for a point. It's not the easiest one in the world and uh, the indication is that we've got a wide ball, he be a disappointed about it. They're not easy by any natural means. Keen Long again. Let's the long delivery. Oh, put the hand on the oh, the massive catch by Jackson Kelly. Jack Kelly now gives it to Shane Ballard. Shane Ballard to Shane Gaffer. The score is an absolutely top class score indeed. As it was caught high in the air by Jack Kelly. And he lays it off. Thomas Shane Ballard and the team captain did all the rest of it. So you can see you're back in the lead once again. That score coming into 29 minutes. It's another blandly score if you like. It's 10 points to one goal and six. And we watch now here the score Shane Ballard getting that one. No. They are trying to, uh, two, three players trying to get it up and how he came over it. Oh, because he's a good holder, that is for You must credit at the minute of uh, any downtime and you must credit the defensive uh, formation that was set up by Middleton CBS causing the free to happen if you like and it means it's a free once again you know, for Ryan McCaffrey can he nail it and put it between the post and we can put a half time it's uh, heading in the right direction on top of that and Ryan McCaffrey is another point by him and they are level once again here in Park Union and Ryan McCaffrey has got a one good point in the 13 minutes how much more time I wonder will be played in it. It's now 1-7 to 10 points. A really top class game of holding it must be seen. As McCaffrey strikes this one. 
Jackson have come into midfield where Sam Quirk gets it and Sam Quirk from his own 65 he posted it around the danger area and straight into the hands there of Keen Long I might give the impression that that was easy or something like that from my Keen Long showing the massive intelligence and he comes to call up Daly now Daly trying to get it out the field trying now is reality as he drops it very close to the sideline he goes out over the line the referee look at watch him on the right hill when he has 20 seconds remaining of the uh, one minute of injury time that the uh, fourth official said should be added on. It's been a clean sporting uh, poorly match between undoubtedly two top teams. Again, uh, looking for a bit, a bit of grass. It's in shot supply here in Port Huey. So the sideline cuts have suffered as a result. As McCarthy, who's been uh, firing balls over the bar from free situations, straight to the underground. And this one back by Owen McCarthy, all around the middle of the park. As he could feel problems, Owen McCarthy must be said. We go down the field here. There's an opportunity for Paul to pull together this one. Paul to pull trying to get away from that moment. And Paul then blowing low into the counter. And the referee has blown the half down whistle. A half that has been absolutely of the highest, highest quality. Four players make their way off. It could be closer. It's level here in the Hampton Cup final. The half time score. If you look over the score, what we'll tell you. It's middle and CBS and all in seven points. Christian Brothers College. Yeah, welcome back from the uh, second half. Both teams out on the pitch. Middle and CBS were here a little earlier. And now they're joined by Christians as uh, players walk all around the video here. In an absolutely packed auditorium. And as we say, we're talking about the Hafti Cup final 2019 version. Well, it could be close for my friends. Level peg at halftime, 1 7 to 10 points, and the second half is underway. Now, Middleton are happy, and they, start, they finished half, I thought, a little bit brighter. That's right, McCarthy now brings it into the inside line, and Joe Stack is in there on this occasion. Joe doesn't get it as Christians work their way out with it. Good defending, and they're going to know with Hannah Hennessy will be torn to the side line. Yet, Captain Bay, good players have been sent by Owen McCarthy, and McCarthy turns out to grab it, and he sends it towards the inside line inside. And the bullies work out, and it comes out with Alice Kiro and Joyce, and Joyce from the Kitchen Wolf Club, a combination of Kelly and St. Eaters, and he walks up to the school player, Billy Scott a point in the first half from Cahill and he moves it forward toward the 20 meter line is there a catch there? Joe Stack does it and Stack strikes it as he was moving away and uh, not, doesn't find the target the fifth point of the game Joe Stack would have been big influence in this game he's been running the big point in the first half and of course there's a great friend of Joe the Pather he was keeping an eye he this Pather was keeping an eye but they've changed him too long now moving forward here to get in his now half trying to put the follow up but it's taken out by Kieran Jones two deliveries early on from Jones there's an officer of Ross O'Regan Ross O'Regan then drills it into the inside line to attack there it is and it is indeed Pavel Hennessy who's won it once again Hennessy uh, flips it behind him and Stack gets it and Stack breaks it over the fellas uh, Keane Farmer Keane Farmer but by, by the time Keane gets it it's from the road the field but Kohalicki gets it it's not all over yet and Kohalicki has crossed the ball was it a pass I wonder was it an intended pass well whether it was or it wasn't it's out the field now by Christians and they control the slither beautifully and again they come forward with it and that's absolutely lovely hauling there and the playing to it with Declan Hanlon Hanlon moves it towards the super forward now he's got it and now he's got it I should say now he'll have to know it's already forward good play by him and he shot up the grip a little bit he shot it up too much because he's out he tried to dish out a hand pass that didn't work for him and coming in to take it well I thought that the captain was going to get that right in the captain but the referee spotted the difference but then there's going to be a free in and a free in to the goal down to all right he's only one take that call me for will be summoned out one more time and a tap it he, uh, put in this one over the bar and a Barbary Powell who had six in the first half gets his opportunity now once again to put Christian's back in the lead and power for free and it's two minutes into the second half and I would imagine that you could be chalking this one now that he will make it a one point match once again Paul and Paul on air right from freeze and general play as well and Paul strikes it is it good enough I wonder the answer is yes over the goal six points from him on this particular game as uh, we watch now from play to resume getting ready to uh, take the ball over Jack McCann Whips it down the field. That is a hook over to Lee Thiessen, who is going to the head. And it is going to the head there on that occasion. The player that got it was Cotton Hickey, but it's taken out. And coming up with him in short, serious aggression is Paul Daly. He's there. It has been a wise decision to introduce him from the start. He's uh, not been found wanting. Two brothers playing in a happy cup final for Cody Warford in the top school. Well, you can take it that in the 100 
it's all the years, all the more years. That probably has never happened in the past, or has it? Maybe if I went down with the same cold as the chick out the road book there, it may have had. Yeah, we win it back here, and Christmas have it once again. And he's driven inside in the bottom of the battle, I don't know. And it's into the hands of the cold ball of the slow and Jack McCann. McCann delivers it long, it's going to drop in the opposition 65 meter line or a little bit inside, it breaks down. And a little bit of stalemate situation, but we know that going with where has it is Ross O'Regan. Ross O'Regan moves it outside to his Kohaliki, and Kohaliki back to O'Regan. O'Regan strikes it, could it be second point of the match? If it's not, it's a free, it's over a battle, and Ross O'Regan gets his second. And we have parity situation once again, as Ross O'Regan, a lovely point by him, and it was good players with by Kohaliki. Changes have been made on the Edmund CBS team, we'll check that in a minute. As uh, we off, I think is Richie Landers is going off, and uh, we'll check out the identity of the player that comes on in a minute. They're on their way here, and it's on the way once again, and it's a lovely bit of uh, walking by Kevin Finn. Oh, beautiful skin by this young man, but I'll tell you, equally beautiful for your skin by Sam Kirk, his club mate from Middleton, blocks him down and delivers to the back as well as Dylan Hogan, who moves it up the field. Dylan Hogan, what a great catch underneath pressure was here with Daly. Daly has his brother outside and Williams decides to play it back. And the perfect plays it back to Spanish Paddle here to see the Mallow player moves it forward. No, oh, what a massive catch. Hands up by Shane Ballard. Grab that one superbly. Get the slip to save away from Tim Pond. This game is after moving up. And after two, it was good in the first half. And just said the player that came off there was Olin Brod that came on from Killer for the Felix Hewitt player. No, it's Christmas on the attack. We have a try to a one-handed strike from Jack O'Kenny. That's what we'll go that way with him. We'll hear all the numbers here. And Paul has it. Oh, what a bit of that goal. The uh, man was lining up. The middle of the defence to everything. I hit the roof. He spotted a free goal. I'm not sure what that was. He is. But uh, there was a pair of two down after that. But there was a lining up as Paul Brick <coughs> was about to a neck rip and tried to find the green flag. For the first time for his double, we have already a his score, but Jason Hanker from Father Only is getting the opening goal of the game to bring their tally, as I said, to uh, their point to score in the open half of the scoreboard. It says level pegging, 1 8 to 11 points. I'm no hoping that everything is the case of prayer on the uh, ground. Is that Paul Ricoff who is lining up to take that shot? And uh, it was going to be no more, but the thing is it. Uh, I would imagine that the free taker will actually see what's going to happen here. Is it going to be Paul himself as the player in question? It's a really, uh, it would be a relative easy free for him. Can we find the slipper somewhere? Well, the referee has uh, produced one. Audrey Paul who has uh, pointed earlier in the half, uh, uh, now gets an opportunity again, as I said, this one to come in the uh, sixth minute of the half. And she has the ball on the bar, who brings it to uh, three points. So Paul recalls two frees. That's the seventh one of the eighth one, I think, from him. on his way from Jack McCann, he's the delivery man, uh, the restarter of the uh, proceedings and it's one point, you know, because as far as Gary Cal and Gary Cal again the defence and the defensive work here is of the highest quality and uh, both sets of players are incredible here for that and Joe Stack poking around the ground, he gets it at the second time of asking, things is knocked away from him and oh the country back down the field is all the captain, Dennis Scala player despite wearing cotton, he was on the fourth, the two position of that occasion. No, decides to go for himself, he's a good low on side, and it goes out for a 65, both with the sword coming Jack McCann, and uh, that means of course that it's an almost giddy here of a player like Paul Big Cole in town, as he comes out to take this over to the great one through the middle, and Hafner causing a few problems there, let me tell you, for the uh, Middleton defence. Close game of home, we can't go there about that, and we'll trim points to one goal in the The 
eight minutes into it as our Paul Paul has an opportunity here of uh, finding the target once again from a 65. Is there any way? But uh, I don't think it's going. No, it's not. The referee has spotted the friend, so it's going to be free out. And this goal is 12 points to one goal in eight. a yellow card after that amount of discussion from the referee and the yellow card indeed has been shown but I've made the mistake and that's the first one and it will mean now that there's a free here for Ryan McCarthy to take and uh, he too has been unerring from freezer Ryan McCarthy after the stack on that occasion and uh, we're we'll looking to watch it until the 11 minutes into the second half so it's an opportunity for Middleton to bring it level once again so he gets ready to strike it. The referee is happy that everything is okay. And all of that, of course, and that includes the case of another situation. We've arrived at where the signs are level. 12 points to Christian Brothers College. Middle and CBS have responded with one ball and nine. We're on Popo territory once again, and uh, the litter will break kindly. And it's Middle and CBS when they were taught they were back, but the hooking that goes on in this match and the blocking is obviously top class. Now it's Middle and Miller on their way. Can they get it inside? Two one of the inside stack is trying to make a run for the leaves. The goalkeeper is equal to the challenge there, and Keen Long walks it out from Glen Rovers, and he gives it to the far side of the field where Dick and Helen decides to let rip. And uh, what's the inside on here and the here I tell you Paul and Paul stayed out it was all over the place and Paul and Paul was trying to get in the door he was in good way and it would have been a way more for Paul inside the backers as the slipper was dropping down the field of the field of Jack McCann and he's still driving forward he's around the line this is open home he made them keep going out and Jack McCann lets rip he passed the goal and he's on his way home but he's given the little down there Paul and 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 Paul and
six, and now there's an opportunity here. It's a Jack McGann. You can I call him a can if you okay? So Jack McGann was the player to get over the field there, and he delivered it up into a wonderfully, uh, wonderfully gathered by Gary Cal, I think it was. And the free is now on its way, but it's not going to get inside. It is getting inside, I thought it was. And it's another way to capture the And he now has put them into the lead. Room goal and 10 to try point. Push the stage. It always is, isn't it? The last quarter. We've arrived at that. Who's going to win the 2019 version of the half deco? It's all to play for with Middleton CBS and the driving seat by a small fraction. The goalkeeper on the full back. Two of the block a little bit of a one two and then it goes out for a wide ball. I don't think they're going to try that stunt anymore. Deliver long it is. Oh, what an absolutely fabulous catch. Now it has to have it. Open the side and the strike can match the catch. And it will mean that Jack McGann will gather once again. Jack McGann, the Middleton goalkeeper. Straight back to here in midfield between two players. We've got to get it to the end of it. It breaks kind and it breaks as far as Ryan McCarthy once again. And McCarthy pulls it inside. One man in there. And the one man is Joe Stack. He gives a sharp hand pass. And it was a little bit too sharp. He was trying to get it on to a keen farmer, but it gets out the field. The first one taken by Cardiff Daly. Daly from this, uh, this more gives it out to uh, Declan. That Declan had it, but as far as Kevin Finn and Kevin Finn. But again, the defence of Middleton CBS is absolutely powerful, and there is no way it's so. And they walk it out, and the ball comes in tight in front of the side of the field. He was only a bit of a stab of to the right hole, and it's driven back by Kevin Finn once again. From Christians into the danger area. In touch. CBS clear their lines and will it be case of Lloyd Hatton will be possession of Lloyd Hatton is following the three years of the Christian and an opportunity to have a hard team once again. with that one to said seven points to the match and we're living from the seventh occasion for two points to one goal and ten no. long delivery once again it's been um, you know an opportunity here not where this little game finally to Gary Cal and you know something I think for a split second thought maybe he the other way took the second for the big ball and, and as a consequence it dropped wide there's six wide middle than CBS as we said we could be uh, it couldn't be closer It's lit out once again. And a great catch over there. The player together the key here. Here on Joyce. And Joyce is on his way. Good play by him. And he decides to move it as far as Kohaliki. Kohaliki. He's about 55 meters old. He's trying to get away from Red Hero Mulcahy. Not an easy thing to do. It's delivered inside. And it's going to be won back by Dave Barry. And Dave Barry drills it out the field. And Barry only out. Uh, and it's not out completely. But it's the stage of the game. There is there to be won. And it's taken forward now by Declan Hanlon. Right up in there. What a great bit of interception, Dylan Hogan. Middleton definitely have uh, played slightly better at the moment. Up towards Joe Stack to Stack Gavin. What a catch by him. And Stack out by the sideline. He tries to drill it inside. And then we get a white flag in that one. If you think it will win the match, so it is. He has seven wide of the game. But Joe Stack's influence in this game is increasing. And it could be crucial before the game's in. The sides are level at this juncture in time. And do we tell you there are a dozen minutes remaining. Plus whatever amount of injury time is going to be added on by the way to Coco will come and will restart by Keen Law. He spotted a foul there and the commitment of the foul there was now happening and uh, this free to be declared that he was fouled there I think with Dara, Dara Morden whether Morden will take this himself or not I'm not too sure. Or it may indeed be Ryan McCaffrey and Roy Schultz will be here for 
uh, supplying the scores now. This one is obviously a long, long distance back for a young man. It's behind his own 45, or behind, yes, behind his own 65 as he gets ready to take this from the size level and a dozen minutes remaining in it. He strikes in the right direction, but I don't think he's going to get between the forces. He's going to drop a wide. It can just uh, keep it in play. It goes out for a wide ball, and that's the eighth wide of the evening. There a little bit more. Shall we say this one for the one we're better way of it as uh, changes have been made and
CBS players down and jump up. We're at a crucial stage of the match. And Christians, remember that they this is a big, big occasion for them. Their first half in Cup final in 100 years. And since they stopped playing half the in 2016, it has been incremental <laughs> progress in each occasion. Quarter final last year, semi final, lost out to Ignard Rees. Can they now deliver another final punch? Or will Middleton CBS be the first club to win the half the cup and bring it back to cup for 13 years when they did it 13 years, years ago? The player that. Uh, Captain on that occasion was Paddy O'Sullivan. He's able to stand today. And now, this one is going by Christian Kevin Clay off the field. Kevin Finn has it. Finn moving forward. And then uh, we've got to look the field. They need to get a clue. Well, do they need to score? They probably do. Right now, it's a Jack Hockey that has it. the second half before Paul Big Paul and as far as I know he's probably their only score eh, Christian's only score in the second half and Paul getting ready to take him once again he's could be for his eighth point of the game does he say it over does he what they've got 14 and then the CBS two goals and ten points two points between them as we head down the home straight of the 2019 Happy Cup final on his way, straight into the hands of Kieran Joyce, what a game he has had, and he moves it forward, all clear is taken, and then an opportunity inside for Olin Broderick, and Olin Broderick delivers it, but unfortunately for him, it's wide number 11, but they're just keeping the, uh, well, I won't say the score will take over, the clock is definitely ticking in the right direction, and we have four minutes remaining in it, four minutes, a two point lead, oh what a massive catch by Kieran Joyce, defend the man of the match, he moves it forward, now and hoping to give it into Keane Farrell, and Farrell tail down the far side of the field over there wanting to win it back from him is Kevin Finn a lovely play by Finn as he goes in the run and Finn gives it moves it forward again you know where it comes from James Scally Scally holding out of position his head pass probably left a little bit to be desired and this put there by Kieran Joyce when he gets it back will he get it back now and he will be the fellow Dylan Hogan to gather it and Dylan Hogan gives it over the fellows of Carl Hickey who's cramping and up he goes for a little bit of as we say when well, it comes down now as far as after and uh, on this occasion, he gathered it superbly, but unfortunately wasn't able to uh, finish by his score. What a fabulous catch by Shane Barrett on the other side. Shane Barrett gets it out to Paul Big Paul. Paul on the top, and he hasn't been called in this. He's just taken away from Middleton and creeping into it. Or creeping into the lead. No, he's been taken back. A lockdown situation. There are people cramping and hurting out there, but nobody is going to give up the ghost in this one. It's game on, and game on big time. Massive delivery in around the middle to go to the middle to the Scully uh, goal area and we'll see who's been going to gather this one. It's taken by David Hogan and Hogan works his way out. He might give a short hand pass. He does give a short hand pass for there. Uh, well, I'll tell you one thing, there was a Samaritan in it. The call that could be made at the end of that one, but they take it forward right now. And it goes down into the third round opportunity now. But it comes to Martin McCall. And he breaks away from him. And it breaks the fellas Killing O'Donovan. And Killing O'Donovan strikes it. As Midland CBS hold on to a two point lead in the half of the cup final. And the final there is still in all. And O'Donovan and Lactic as it peeps into the afters and the end. Oh, the player that was fouled there on that occasion. And now we'll see what's going to happen. Is it an opportunity, I wonder? Is the free taker down injured? That could be some major concern for. Middleton's for Christian Brothers College and I know it's on the far side but old Mulcahy is down and a change has been made and coming in I think Jack O'Kelly is coming off for the moment and Robbie Cotter from Black Rock is coming off Robbie Cotter coming on and it would appear that Paul McCall is the player of the stone injured can he get up when he has absolutely no choice but certainly he's in some pain can he save this one over the bar in the last 
well, to make it a point game and we've got a minute left. As Paul McPowell, he struck the last one about four or five minutes ago. Now his opportunity to level, to bring it to within a one point match, it would be his nine point of the match. Or there or there about. It's two goals and ten to fourteen points before this set CBS add on to this and they have prediction of play. Take it forward now is Olin Bobby. Olin Bobby will it down to Arthur McGowan. Does he gather it? Well, the answer he doesn't. But there may be somebody else there to help it out. He does now. And he tries to strike it from that distance out the field. He's dropping around in the danger area. Stack is waiting underneath him. And uh, as a pull it in, it comes off the post there. I tell you, I don't know who got it in. But it was almost the case of Goodnight like Irene. As he Christian still fight them two points behind. Little and CBS. We ain't forgiving this one up. in their particular history. We've reached injury time and I would imagine Ryan McCaffrey if he's at home will he be the player to take this one or will he leave it to Ross O'Regan? Ross O'Regan gets in has the opportunity to take this one and Ross O'Regan can he get the it could very well be the last score of the game as O'Regan strikes this one is going to save between the posts and that means now on the 15th minute they've got two goals and 11 points for 14 points so they're moving leading now by all of three points and we're in injury time Puck on it's on its way once again it's a goal or nothing now I would imagine for Christians to keep them in town as they move forward with it on the fifth outside now Shane Banner has it and Banner gives it an opportunity here but it's taken off the line once again CBS he uh, can the ball and walk out when it comes to Kenny Lord Donovan it ain't time for sale it's not time to celebrate yet they go rising forward and Little Tara uh, Christian Brothers have moved players up into an attacking area in a bit to get the final goal because it will take a goal right now for them to win it as we look at the watch and tell you they are the second minute of injury time and away they come nice delivery but only now the start is Kevin Finn and Kevin Finn delivers it inside they could be an opportunity here but a shot coming in is there it's good defending as players gather around it and when the players gather around it's making so it's difficult now for Christians to get in front of the fight and match when they go on it's got out the field and it could be gone from the road now as all of Broderick could gather it Broderick gather it, where's the whistle? I'd imagine it would be coming any moment as all of Broderick lets it down for a minute it's going to be a great, great day for them and it's going to wait for Stack is going to score so Stack is on the move and we watch him and he's still poking forward he's got a free hit and Joe Stack's final action of the game I would imagine they have now can celebrate over there on the far side of the field because this is going to be now when he shall go. Middleton's Day, they will be the club that will gather this particular cup of the and take it to the Fay and North Street, Hurling North Street East Court. They can celebrate for a few days as they're on midterm break. It's been And the uh, final uh, act, the red card, I think it's probably uh, maybe a second yellow followed by a red or was it a straight red? But then it means the Panda Hennessy won't uh, play any more part in this game. Tell you one thing for nothing, he gave it his all while he was in there, but it means now that there's a free in. And this is surely the opportunity for this one to be finished because the free taking Ross O'Regan who has taken over the free taking duty is going to make it a four point match as we look at the watch it until 23 minutes have gone and this could be a 2-12 to 14 points if he puts this one over the bar would you back him and uh, it's split over and it's over the court and then it fell and now we would imagine the referee when he blows the whistle it's all in his hands now 
Murphy from Limerick. We watch the puck out. It will take a goal and a point. And two teams that have given it their all and given a lot of entertainment. They're on their way forward once again. And it's now half the goal that has it. Half the walks it forward. And the player that has it over there is Dick and Hanlon. Dick and Hanlon trying to come in. Hanlon gets down. And uh, over there the finish is lying. Middleton corner for Brian. The referee has got the full time whistle. And the Hanley court has gone down to his court. As they were in there, they And what it was a wonderful, wonderful occasion for Horby here on the side. A crowd in excess of 7,000 people answered the call for this great day, and it is a, a positive reflection on all the speed on the underage hurling in Cork. The tide has changed. It's red time in Munster. It's half the cup time down in East Cork. And the trophy goes to the Linden CBS for the fourth time in that history. We've never 1998, 1995, 2006. And now it will go there for the fourth time when the trophy presentation will take place. In a few moments from now, and Joe Stack there is being patted on the back. And where he should. And there were many, many stars. But was there anyone brighter one than Kieran Joyce, that outstanding simple? Why do we have to establish for them? But it takes two to tango and Christian Brothers brought all the colour. They brought incredible hurling. It was a wonderful day for them. They had only to be one winner at the end. And the winner we salute, Lennington CBS.
lot of great teams over the years. It's great to see you back in a Hearts Cup final and winning it. And I suppose nothing left for me but to present um, Cornshaw, Brona, our captain and the foreigner, Dylan Hogan. Well done, Dylan.